Hello, this is Robert Flanick, the owner of Brutal Iron Gym. I'm here for another segment of the Ask Rob video series. So, uh, what we wanted to do today was talk about cardio. Um, it actually works out pretty well because I'm walking on a treadmill right now. So, we're going to talk about what are the best types of cardio uh, for whatever your goal is and uh, whether or not you should eat beforehand, kind of any of those kind of general questions. So, to start off, there's two basic forms of cardio. There's steady state and then there's interval. So steady state cardio is kind of what I'm doing right now, is uh, you just pick an intensity level. And it could be speed or incline, or if you're on the elliptical, it could be the resistance on the elliptical. But basically you're just picking an intensity, and you're going to stay at that same intensity for a duration of the cardio. So if you do it 20 minutes, you just pick the same speed or the same intensity for the whole 20 minutes. And the other option is interval training. And with that one is you do have changing levels of intensity. So again, it can be speed, it can be the resistance of something. If you're doing like a weighted exercise, you can change the weight back and forth. But really it's where you're going to change the intensity throughout the entire time. So uh, if I'm doing it for say 20 minutes, I might do say two minutes of a low intensity, one minute of a high intensity, and I'll switch back and forth for the entire 20 minutes. And what that does is there's a lot of positive and negatives to either one. So really you just kind of have to try it and see which one you like. And then we're going to talk later in the video about when's the best time for each. So if your goal is performance and you're trying to increase your athletic performance, say for a sport, like maybe you're in football and you're trying to do some cone drills, or if you're training for like a half a marathon or something like that. But if your goal is performance, really you kind of can do your cardio anytime. So with performance-based cardio, you kind of already have a plan. So they have cone drills to do. If you're running for, you're practicing for a half marathon, you should have a running program that you're following. So the workouts are already dictated uh, what type of workout you should do. So really you can do them anytime. The biggest thing is you want to make sure you have at least one meal in you. So I wouldn't really wake up and then go right to uh, the gym and start doing my cardio. If you do it on empty stomach, you're not going to be able to perform very well. Uh, you might get sick pretty quickly, like maybe your blood sugar will drop too fast. So you want to have a little bit of food in you so that way you can run well, uh, perform well. I mean, um, then the other thing is if you are doing uh, performance cardio and if it's high impact, like it involves a little bit of damage to the joints, uh, like sprint work, maybe body weight stuff like burpees and whatnot, you do want to have some protein afterwards. So what that'll do is it'll help repair the muscles or the joints, depending on how much damage there was. But it allows your body to kind of preserve muscle mass. So sometimes when people start running for, say, half a marathon, they really don't pay attention to their food. And uh, say 10 weeks into the training, they realize they've lost a lot of muscle. They can't uh, function as well. They kind of feel tired throughout the day. Their energy levels are kind of crap. So you want to make sure you pay attention to your food. So you want to make sure that you have some type of protein. Uh, I'd probably have it before and after the training, so that way you don't lose any muscle. Uh, if your goal is strength and you want to do some cardio, you want to keep it minimal. So just enough to kind of keep heart health and uh, general conditioning. And what you can do there is you kind of focus on low impact stuff. So you can do sled pushes, sled drags. You can be on a treadmill like I am for a stroll. So go for a little walk on a treadmill. But you don't want to cause too much damage to the joints. So strength training when you're doing really heavy bench presses, deadlifts, and squats, they're already going to cause a lot of damage to the joints on their own. So not damage where it's negative and you shouldn't do it. It was just wear and tear. So uh, you don't really want to add to that by doing too much cardio. So if your goal is strength, remember your goal is strength. So you're trying to get strong. You're not trying to become an endurance athlete and run 10 miles. So don't worry about the cardio too, too much. You do want to do enough to keep your heart healthy. But really focus on your main goal. Your main goal is strength. If your goal is muscle mass and you're trying to put on some muscle, so you're in the off season, you're trying to see what you can gain before you have to start cutting down for a contest or something like that. Again, you want to keep your cardio kind of minimal. If you do too much, it really takes away from the calories available to build muscle mass. So you want to, again, just do enough to keep heart health, keep your conditioning level. So if you notice when you're training, you're doing squats, like high rep squats, like maybe doing 10, uh, 12, 15 reps, and you just can't breathe, and it's really your lungs that are causing you to fail, not really your muscles, then you do want to start doing a little bit of cardio. Or you can actually structure your weight training to incorporate cardio where you do things like supersets uh, or compound sets or drop sets, some techniques that kind of are cardio-based 
to make you breathe a little bit heavier, and that'll help increase your uh, cardiovascular endurance uh, on its own. So you don't really need to do cardio if you don't want to. You can kind of incorporate it into your workout. So uh, then if your goal is fat loss, really that's where it comes into play, the different types. Do I do fasted state where I'm on an empty stomach in the morning? Do I do my cardio before my weight training? Do I do my cardio after my weight training? So again, if your goal is fat loss, the biggest thing is just pick something to do it. So a lot of times people worry about what is the best and they never actually do anything. So I find it kind of comical to where some of the people that come to the gym and they'll ask me, you know, hey, what's the best type of cardio? And I'm asking, and I'll ask them, well, what do you do now? And they say nothing. Now, at that point, it really doesn't matter what I tell them. Anything I tell them is going to get them some results. So I kind of just tell them to do what fits into their schedule. So if your schedule allows you to do fast uh, cardio, like empty stomach, get up in the morning before you go to work, uh, then go ahead and do that. If you don't want to do that, you're not really a morning person or you're kind of rushed in the mornings, then do your cardio based around your workout. So it really matters uh, depending on your schedule and your preference. So um, if you do get a chance to do fasted cardio, which is an empty stomach, you want to kind of get up in the morning, go to the bathroom, get yourself ready, go to the gym. You don't really want to intake anything with too many calories. Uh, you definitely really don't want to take anything with sugar. So sometimes people will drink uh, branch chain amino acids when they do the cardio. That's fine. There's not really significant calories in there. But uh, what you want to do, the whole point is to come in on an empty stomach. So you want to do your cardio on empty stomach. What that does is it burns up your glycogen stores. Glycogen is a fancy word for stored carbohydrates. So the carbohydrates you eat, like potatoes, rice, pasta, or if you're eating junk, candy. So um, those carbs, they get stored in your muscles in the form of glycogen. All it is is just fuel that your body is ready to use whenever it needs to perform. Uh, so really the idea of fasted state cardio is to come in, burn up your glycogen stores, so you start the day kind of empty, and what that does, it promotes more fat loss throughout the day. So if your schedule allows you to do that, go ahead and do so. Um, usually fasted cardio on an empty stomach in the morning, you want to focus more on steady state cardio. So you don't want to do too much high impact stuff. And you can do intervals, but um, usually I recommend people do intervals but at walking paces. So they might have a treadmill, let's say their easy part will be 3 miles an hour at 3% incline. And then for the hard part, they might jack it up to 10% incline at maybe 3.5 miles an hour. So what they're doing, though, is they're keeping a walking pace that's not going to cause a lot of damage to the joints. So when you're in a fasted state, your body really doesn't have a lot of resources to kind of run anything or fix anything. So you want to be kind of nice to it. Don't want to beat it up too bad from sprints and stuff like that. So if you do like to do sprint work or uh, high intensity interval training, that's actually best to do right before your weight training. The reason why is the high intensity interval training, it burns up your glycogen stores really quickly and it, it's a really good way to get the body warmed up. Your joints are going to be ready, the blood's going to be flowing, your adrenaline's going to be flowing. So you can go right into the workout and by having the glycogen stores depleted, you're going to have a better chance of burning body fat or stored body fat uh, during the workout and um, you're already warmed up, you're already ready to go. So if you like doing high intensity sprints, stuff like that, then that's best to do right before the workout. Uh, if, you only, if you don't have time to do uh, cardio in the morning and you don't want to do sprint work, then you can do your cardio after training or post training. And with that, as you do your weight training, you do the best you can. You might want to structure your workouts uh, with faster pace, do things like giant sets, supersets, trying to do your exercises back to back. Get as much work in as you can, kind of keeping a faster pace. But um, then after the weight training, you can go on to cardio, and uh, you can do that steady state cardio. You just want to pick maybe something like 20, 30 minutes, try to pick an intensity that's pretty, pretty hard for the full duration of the 20, 30 minutes. So uh, the other thing is if you're doing intensity, uh, high intensity interval training, there's a lot of ratios people will talk about in terms of the high intensity versus the low intensity. I kind of simplify it for myself and for my clients. I use a two to one ratio. So if someone's doing low impact, like they're doing sled pushes or walking paces, we do a two to one with two, two parts of work to one part rest. So it doesn't have to be two minutes to one minute. It can be like two units of 30 seconds to one unit of 30 seconds. But basically, let's talk about minutes because it'll be easier. 
Um, but we would do two minutes of the high intensity, like the faster paced walk, or the harder of the two options. You would do two minutes of the harder option, one minute of the easier option. And that's if you're doing low impact. If you're doing high impact, like sprint work, then we keep that same two to one, but we make it two parts of the uh, two minutes or two units of the easy aspect to one minute or one unit of the harder aspect. So if you're doing sprints, you would do, say, two minutes at a pretty fast walking pace or a medium walking pace, and then you do one minute of a full out sprint. And then you switch back and forth for whatever duration you want to do, whether it's 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. So, um, but those are basically the different types you have. So if you're doing performance cardio, do it any time. Make sure you get a little bit of protein before and afterwards, and you have a meal in your belly before you start. If you're doing strength training or mass training, try to keep the cardio relatively minimal and um, try not to cause too much damage to the joints. If you're doing fat loss, what you do depends on your schedule, depends on your preferences. So if you do fasted cardio, make sure you're actually fasted. Don't eat any food before you go in the gym. Um, and then if you're doing the high intensity interval training, do that before your workouts. And if you want to do uh, just steady state after your workouts, that's fine as well. So um, that's about it. So again, if you have any questions, you can always visit me at www.brutalirongym.com and you can contact me directly from that website. We have an email link. So you can send me an email with any questions or comments. Or if you have any uh, topics you'd like me to talk about, just go ahead and shoot me an email as well. Um, if you're watching these videos, we do have a page on Facebook. So you can search for Brutal Iron Gym on Facebook. We have a page there and I usually post these videos. So if you watch the video and you actually enjoy the video, go ahead and click like on the Facebook page. What that does, it just increases the uh, access that other people have to the information. So it gets the word around the world of Facebook a little bit faster. So if you like the videos, actually click like. I'll appreciate it. Um, anything other than that, just feel free to contact me with any questions. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed the information. Thank you.